This is Tom Ryan Slayer, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gurhamid here from Loudwire, and it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time with a guest you've all been asking for for a very long time, Mr. Tom Araya of Slayer. They've been asking? They've been asking for you. <laughs> Dude, that's and awesome. we got them for you. <laughs> Don't say we're not good to you. So. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we looked at your Wikipedia page, uh -huh. Slayer's Wikipedia page, album songs, all that stuff. Right. I'm going to go to you because we believe you're a good source on yourself. You call me a horse? <laughs> source? Yeah. A zorse. That's a real animal. Have you ever seen a zorse? You're going to a horse's mouth. <laughs> Look up zorse with a Z. All right. All right. First question. List your name because they do get it wrong sometimes. As Tomas Enrique Araya Diaz. Yeah, that's my full name. That's the full name. That's good. my full name. And you're born in uh, Viña del Mar, Chile. That's correct. Okay, good. They got that right. Pass on that one. Uh, it says you grew up in Maywood, California, in what you've described as a bad neighborhood that was fairly gang-oriented. <laughs> I grew up in one, two... I grew up in three neighborhoods. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, the first part of my... My young years, I was in uh, Southgate, and then we moved to Maywood, and then we moved to Huntington Park. And Maywood was was a, a, a well, it was kind of a gang oriented neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. But it, it you know, it was, I don't know, to me it was normal. So I don't know what, but you know, but I, it wasn't, it was, you know, that was in the early stages of, of that kind of stuff going on. Okay. Was there ever any pressure growing up to, to join a gang life or anything like that? No, they were around and, you know, it was, what are you going to do? But I'm just no, not. I was, there, was, there wasn't any nothing. pressure. Okay. Nobody ever said, better fucking join our gang. And like, and even if they did, I still wouldn't have done that. It just wasn't my thing. You never know. So. You know, uh, I guess if I didn't find music. Who knows? Who knows? But, who knows? yeah, I, I don't think I would have been a part of that. Uh, this, this part was. It seemed very strange to me. Uh, it said that Slayer began using satanic themes in both lyrics and live performances to gain notice among the metal community. I think we did, no, we, we used Fiction. that. We used that more to be different from the Hollywood community. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. it was to be different and to scare people, you know, because yes. that stuff kind of scares people, you know, we. And that's kind of fun, you know, when you scare people and they, yeah. they don't, they don't like, oh, are they evil? Are they satanic? So we did that more for, um, more to fuck with people. That's kind of like a lot of reasons why we do a lot of the shit we do is to fuck with people. Yeah. And that was a good way to fuck with the Hollywood crowd because they were all, you know, they were a bunch of guys uh, looking like, you know, w uh, girls, women. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and we wanted to be. The ugly guys, you know, that didn't look like women. They knew how to put makeup on. We looked like guys that didn't know how to put makeup on. You know what I mean? So we there we was wanted, a little makeup we in want, the we, beginning, to be honest, though. Yeah, we did, but that was, it was just eyeliner. But I mean, that you know, that's what that's my point. Yeah. You know, we didn't do it to look pretty. We did it to look <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. But that that was the scene then, and and we didn't we didn't want anything a part of that. We didn't want to be a part of that. Right. So we we did this this different image to just to. Fuck with everybody. Sure. Uh, so that Slayer began its first national club tour in 1984 to promote Show No Mercy. You guys traveled in your Camaro tour, uh, towing a U-Haul trailer, and your younger brother Johnny, who was 13 or 14 at the time, was a roadie who would set up the back line and do sound for you. That's correct. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we had, uh, it was him, and uh, we had a, a drum tech, uh, a guy named Kevin Reed. But uh, it was my brother and, and Kevin, and at they were that both young of an age. That's so cool to be go on tour. Oh, at yeah. That young. Did you get any yeah. chicks? Yeah, you know, but that, that that changes your life so much. You know, yeah. the experience of going out on because when we, when we were in California, it was you know it was a different story because we were in one spot. But the minute we went out and ventured out and and experienced all that, and then come home, you come home different. Mm -hmm. You know, you you come home with a little more knowledge, most street knowledge, if anything, 
a little smarter about how the world really is. So that really mm. changed him at that young age. It was good for him. It was kind of good for him. Yeah, yeah it was kind of good for him because he got, you know, he got back home. He had to go back to school. Yeah, and was, here he is thinking. hanging out. Is here he is? He's hanging out with all these other kids uh, that are fourteen, fifteen. And he's kind of like, he's just like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so what am I doing here? So, you know, it. Um, he, you know, he 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 finished school, which was you know, but um, uh, but it, it you know it you it change it when when you go out and you experience shit. You know, and it was the same way when we went to Europe. He went to Europe with us. Wow. And that was the very first time I went to Europe in 85. It was the same thing. Was this like during summer vacations and stuff for him? Well, it was in the summertime, but no, he, he uh, took, uh, took a uh, leave of absence from school. Beautiful. Yeah. So that was even worse because in Europe, things are a little different. Yeah. So that, Rules are a little looser maybe for... Well, yeah, the rules are a little looser, but, you know, everybody, you know, being in a band and working with a band, no one's going to question your age. <laughs> I mean, and that drinking was, age is only eighteen in a lot of those countries, so it's a little yeah. But I mean, but he was, you know, he was, he was, fuck, uh, he was obviously he was, like, yeah. he was fifteen or sixteen at the time when he went to Europe. He was, man. I think he was, oh, I think he was fourteen when he went to Europe. Man, I'm sure he's got some amazing stories. Yeah, he was, he was fourteen. He was fourteen when he went to Europe. It says that your first lyrical contribution to Slayer was the vampire theme track "At Dawn They Sleep" on Hello Waits. That's that's the first one that that I was given credit for, yeah. Okay, so what did you do? I did I did, I did stuff on Show No Mercy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I you know, and it's and it's you know, uh, Jeff was working on ideas and and you know he he I got you know he's, he's working out ideas. Like how about if you did this here? He goes, oh okay, cool, we write stuff. So gotcha. I helped write, I contributed lyrics to some of the songs on Show No Mercy. Okay. Even good. though I didn't get credit for it. All right, well there you go. A little bit of fiction there. Uh, Def Jam's distributor Columbia Records refused to release Rain and Blood due to its graphic cover and themes. Uh, the album was distributed by Geffen, but it did not appear in the Geffen Records release schedule because of controversial this and that and whatever. Columbia refused to release Rain and Blood because of Angel of Death. Okay, strictly because of that song. Strictly because of that song. Not that, because the album cover is really nothing, not... It had nothing to do with the album cover. It had no. everything to do with the song. Wow. Okay. Uh, was it the same with Geffen not putting it in their release schedule? Geffen didn't. Geffen, Geffen didn't even put their logo, their, their David Geffen logo on the album. It was oh, just wow. American. It was released through Geffen, but you know, what I mean, it's like they they kind of like they handled huh. it with they handled it with gloves, mm. so they wouldn't leave their imprint on it. <laughs> but uh, but Geffen, you know, but Geffen, yeah, Geffen picked it up, and uh, which I think was was actually a really good opportunity for Ruben because. Yes. Uh, Ruben, because Columbia not releasing the album was a breach of, breach of contract. For uh, okay. so yeah. so Ruben was able to get out of that and was able to do his own his own thing. An American is his label. Right? Yeah, yeah, American is his thing. So he was able to get out of that and, and make his own label. Divine intervention. It said the album came out of four years of you hating life. What? <laughs> It said, Divine Intervention, the album came out of four years of you hating life. I guess as inspiration, a product. I, 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 uh, the, I, I, that album, in my opinion, was, was not the best production-wise. Okay, but you, you, but weren't hating like, life. you weren't like depressed, cowering in a, in a corner for four years, then wrote about it and recorded it. <laughs> no, no, okay. no. That's just what it says. Who wrote that? I did. Uh, I don't know. Wikipedia. No, you people. Can't, people can people can add to that, right? They can sit yes. there and edit it and, uh, and yeah, claim I mean, that they're like that, that they know what they're writing about. Yes. Yeah. No. That's right. That that album that album in my opinion was was production wise not the best record. We recorded. We we would we would start recording in one studio, and then we were told that we had to leave in a week. So we'd, oh, have to, we'd have to go to another studio, you know, and like anything else, you have to sit there and, and try to match yeah, sounds. the dynamics go Yeah, on. you got to get all the right dynamics together. And so we'd sit there and then we, you know, we'd try to find it and then we'd like, well, let's just re-record -re the stuff. So we re-recorded and only to find out that, you know, we only have this place for a few weeks. We got to go somewhere else after that. We were in three different studios and it was, it was a disaster. Yeah. You know, we, en we ended up, we finished it, but it's, it was, 
just not my favorite. But but no hating life for four years prior to, to no. my intervention. All right, last one for you. Hating life? No. no. Oh, I'm glad it's false. Huh? I don't like you being sad. I'm not. I'm not. I'm always. Sad. I, I get a little upset and angry sometimes, but not I, I don't let it sometimes. interfere with my smile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one for you. Uh, Eyes of the Insane. Uh, while walking through an airport, you picked up an issue of Texas Monthly that wrote about the Iraq War in great detail. After reading the magazine multiple times and becoming somewhat obsessed with it, uh, you woke up in the middle of the night and wrote down the song's lyrics. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it was an article about, um, um, uh, what's that, uh, the post, post-distress syndrome? Oh, post-traumatic stress. That's it. Post, yeah. yeah, it was post-traumatic stress syndrome. It was an article about that, and it was about it was about three three soldiers that that uh, were in Iraq, and then they came back, and and it was their story. And mm. I, I was I was like I was like wow. You know, I was asleep, and I woke up with that in my mind, and I just mm. kind of wrote it. So I wrote, wow. I mean, in just a, a basic a basic draft of how I, I thought it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I did cool. the same thing with with because uh, Jeff was telling me like he was writing that song Jihad. Yes. And, and, he, and he told me that. He goes, I'm going to write a song called Jihad. I looked at him. I go, you sure? He goes, he goes yeah. He goes, I, and, I looked, and I looked at him, and he was like, you know, from the perspective of the terrorists. Yeah, I'm like, oh, dude. Go, oh. That song. I go, that's really, really cool. He goes, man, but we're going to get shit for that. <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes, yeah, I know. I'm like, I guess that's a great idea, though. But there was a program on it on TV. It's a and &E, I'm not sure which one of those, one of those, one of those networks. And they talked about the jihadists and stuff, and and I was kind of like, I, I caught it. I was like, watching it, this, you know. I'm, and I was just watching it, and then they started talking about the the manual, the oh, the, yes. the jihad manual, right? The manual for that they have for for terrorists. So I'm just sitting there, like listening to that. They go, oh, 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 paper, paper. I grabbed that piece of paper and just kind of jotted down things to that 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 I could. Okay, wrote that, wrote that, and that was the tail end of the that song. Was the ending. Of, that was uh, Mohammed Atta's. A manual, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just kind of like just jotting what I was here, and I didn't, I didn't, you know, because I'm, uh, I'm terrible at shorthand. So I was just writing things that were that I was hearing. I was missing a bunch of stuff, but I was like, okay, that's cool. That's, and I just start writing all this stuff down. I did the song, worked on it, worked on it, and then uh, we, we, you know, uh, I said, well, I go just run this thing and make it sound like I'm doing a like a. a, a a public. Uh, oh, that was your voice. That was my voice, uh, like a public wow. service thing, you know. Make it sound like I'm coming out through like a, a, a bullhorn. Yeah. I go give it that bullhorn effect, like I'm talking to people out in the street, and they're like, okay. And uh, and then and I, you know, and I didn't really have anything written. I just had the, the stuff that I just jotted down. So uh, I just I just started reciting what I had jotted down. There was there was no. I mean, it just I just started jot, uh, reciting it, and then I, and I and it and it ended. And I go, wow, that was cool. This guy, let's try it again. I couldn't replicate it. No. So the first take. So, was the one so you used. what you hear on the record is like the just the initial take of what we did that day. Damn. Yeah, and that was one of those things where when I it's like it just gave me goosebumps. I was like, oh my god, this yes. is so cool. <laughs> the first time I heard Jihad, I was listening to Christ Illusion and I was playing Tetris, and that song came on. And then during that last part, I heard it and I went just like. And I lost Tetris because of that came in. It distracted me, but very uh, super intense and yeah, that was brilliantly placed. There was a lot of uh, the eyes of the insane was also like that. Was, was yeah, it? yeah. It was one of those things where just kind of kind of well, just the magic happens, and those are the best ones when yeah. when, just, when it just it just happens. And there's a lot of stuff like that that we've done. And it's usually something that me and Jeff would write. We work on ideas, and then we just. Right, we just go with it, and he'd be like, "Oh fuck, that's awesome!" I go, oh, feels good. And then you try to replicate it. Sometimes you get it again, and sometimes like just like the Angel of Death scream. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Like when we did that, I remember Jeff and, and uh, he goes, "You need you need to do something there." And then Ruben was the same way, and they were like, "You know, try, just try to scream, try try to do something." And I'm kind of like, so I listened to it a few times. Said, All right, let's, let's 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 do it. And I did that scream, and they were like, "Yeah." That's fucking awesome. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And then couldn't, couldn't, you know, I, I, I tried to, I couldn't replicate it. It's like Number of the Beast. It's like the scream in Number of the Beast. Just came out of nowhere and Bruce just couldn't 
quite do it again. Yeah, you can't. You, there's certain things she's, and that, that's how that was. It was, they were like, yeah. And then we tried to do it. I don't know how many times I did it, and they're like, and they're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Well, we we got it. That first one was great. I just got schooled in Slayer knowledge. I feel so good because of it. Thank you so much, Tom, for your Thank time. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it so Thank much. You. Slayer, go grab Repentless if you haven't already. Tom Araya, everybody. Thank you.